Hi students. In this session, we are going to discuss about the production of circularly and elliptically polarized light. In the first part of the discussion, we are just going to see the mathematical steps behind the production of circularly and elliptically polarized light. How can we justify or explain the production of these kinds of polarized light mathematically? And, the math, and from the mathematical result, we are going to uh, explain how we actually produce circularly and elliptically polarized light. So let us begin. Here, we consider a doubly refracting crystal like this. So, this is a doubly refracting crystal and a beam of plain polarized light is allowed to fall on it. Normally, see it is allowed to fall <coughs> normally on the doubly refracting crystal. Normally means it can fall either like this, in this direction normally, it can fall in this direction normally, it can fall in this direction or this direction, all these directions. It must be allowed to fall normally on the crystal. The next condition is it must be falling in a direction perpendicular to the optic axis. That is, if this is the optic axis, the dotted line represents the optic axis of my crystal, the beam of plane polarized light must fall perpendicular to the optic axis too. That means a beam of plane polarized light is allowed to fall normally in a direction perpendicular to the optic axis with vibrations. The vibrations of the plane polarized light is inclined at an angle theta with respect to the optic axis. So these are the initial conditions required. So we consider a beam of plane polarized light incident normally in a direction perpendicular to the optic axis with vibrations inclined at an angle theta to the optic axis on a doubly refracting crystal. Next what we consider is the amplitude of vibration of the polarized light. Let capital A be the amplitude of vibration of this plane polarized light. So as you see in the figure, see this is the amplitude A and it is inclined at an angle theta with the optic axis. So, this amplitude A, what will happen is, we have already learned in the case of a quarter wave plate, that is quarter wave and half wave plates, when a beam of plane polarized light passes through a doubly refracting crystal, it will split into an O and E components. So, here, this, is, this represents the amplitude of the O component and this represents the amplitude of the E component that is E component has vibrations parallel to the plane of incidence and O component has vibrations perpendicular to the plane of incidence. So if capital A represents the amplitude of the plane polarized light then A cos theta which I represent by small a represents the amplitude of the E component a and A sin theta equal to small b will represent the amplitude of the O component. I hope this is clear to all. So when a beam of plane polarized light passes through a doubly refracting crystal, it will split into not into O and E rays, but it will split into O and E components such that the amplitude of the E component is A cos theta equal to small a and the amplitude of the O component is A sin theta equal to small b. So what are you getting inside the crystal? You are getting two vibrations in two perpendicular directions. One is due to the O component and the other is due to the E component. So uh, these two vibrations as you know, the uh, incident light, the incident plane polarized beam is falling perpendicular to the optic axis. So, the two components will travel in the same direction but with different velocities. So, when they come out of the crystal, they will have a path difference, which means they will have a phase difference. plane polarized beam normally, 
ഒപ്റ്റിക്കൽ ഒപ്റ്റിക് ആക്സിസിന് പെർപെൻഡിക്കുലറായി ഒരു ഡബ്ലി റിഫ്രാക്റ്റിംഗ് ക്രിസ്റ്റലിൻ്റെ മുകളിൽ വീഴാൻ അനുവദിച്ചാൽ അതിൻ്റെ വൈബ്രേഷൻസ് തീറ്റ എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ആംഗിളിൽ ഒപ്റ്റിക് ആക്സിസുമായി ഇൻക്ലൈൻഡ് ആണെങ്കിൽ അതെന്ത് ചെയ്യും അത് രണ്ട് കമ്പോണൻസായി സ്പ്ലിറ്റ് ചെയ്യപ്പെടും ഒന്ന് ഓ കമ്പോണൻറ്റും ഒന്ന് ഇ കമ്പോണൻറ്റും അവരുടെ ഈ ഓ ആൻഡ് ഇ കമ്പോണൻസും വൈബ്രേഷൻസാണ് അവരുടെ ആംപ്ലിറ്റ്യൂഡ് എന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ ഒന്ന് എ കോസ് തീറ്റ മറ്റേത് എ സൈൻ തീറ്റ ഇവിടെ എ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് നമ്മുടെ ഇൻസിഡൻറ്റ് പ്ലെയിൻ പോളറൈസ് ലൈറ്റിൻ്റെ ആംപ്ലിറ്റ്യൂഡ് ഈ പ്ലെയിൻ പോളറൈസ് ലൈറ്റ് ഇൻസിഡൻറ്റ് ആയിരിക്കുന്നത് ഒപ്റ്റിക് ആക്സിസിന് പെർപെൻഡിക്കർ പെർപെൻഡിക്കുലർ ആയതുകൊണ്ട് തന്നെ ഈ ഓയും ഈ കമ്പോണൻസും തമ്മിൽ അവർ ഒരേ ദിശയിൽ സഞ്ചരിക്കും പക്ഷെ അവർ തമ്മിൽ ഒരു പാത്ത് ഡിഫറൻസ് ഉണ്ടായിരിക്കും പാത്ത് ഡിഫറൻസ് ഉണ്ടെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഉറപ്പായിട്ടും അവിടെ ഒരു ഫേസ് ഡിഫറൻസ് ഉണ്ടാവും സോ വെൻ ദേ കം ഔട്ട് ഓഫ് ദി ക്രിസ്റ്റൽ ദേ വിൽ ഹാവ് എ പാത്ത് ഡിഫറൻസ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ദേ വിൽ ദെയർ വിൽ ബി എ ഫേസ് ഡിഫറൻസ് ഓഫ് ഡെൽറ്റ ഐ എം ഇമാജിനിങ് ഓർ ഐ എം അസൈനിങ് ലെറ്റ് ദി ഫേസ് ഡിഫറൻസ് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ദി ഓ ആൻഡ് ദി കമ്പോണൻസ് ബി ഡെൽറ്റ ദെൻ Uh, then i can consider my o and e components as two simple harmonic motions which are at right angles to each other with a phase difference of delta isn't it so they are simple vibrations these o and e components means they are simple vibrations or they are they can be considered as simple harmonic motions which are at right angles to each other that is one is along vibrating along this direction and the other one is a vibration along or a simple harmonic motion along the uh, the perpendicular direction so they are both simple harmonic motions perpen- in perpendicular directions and what is the difference between them they have a phase difference of delta so from our previous knowledge about wave motion you can write the displacement in the x direction because the uh, uh, e component is moving or vibrating along the x direction so the displacement in the x direction due to the uh, e component can be given as x is equal to a sin omega t a simple equation for displacement uh, in which you have already learned in chapters on wave motion so displacement in the x direction due to the e component is given as x is equal to a sin omega t that is because our uh, the vibrations of the e component is along the x direction and the displacement uh, in the y direction due to the o component is given as y is equal to b sin omega t plus delta മനസ്സിലായി എന്ന് കരുതുന്നു അതായത് ഒരു സിമ്പിൾ ഹാർമോണിക് മോഷനിലെ ഡിസ്പ്ലേസ്മെൻറ്റ് Uh, along a specific direction is given by the equation general equation nammal parayaru y direction lanu y is equal to a sin or cos omega t plus delta a equation e njan krithyamayi e component vibrate cheynad x direction la ayonde x equal to a sin omega t ennum o component vibrate cheynad y direction la ayonde y equal to b sin omega t adayathu a yum b yum avarade particular aya allengil avarku corresponding aya amplitudes aanu small a is equal to a cos omega t small b is equal to capital a sin omega t nammal already kandupidichu vechathu y is equal to small b sin omega t plus delta i assign this delta to one of these displacements avaru thammilulla phase difference okay appo now what i do is i just Uh, rearrange this x is equal to a sin omega t as x by a equal to sin omega t from that i get cos omega t is equal to root of 1 minus sin square omega t that is equal to 1 root of 1 minus this one x square by a square now y by b i just rearrange the second equation y equal to b sin omega t plus delta as y by b equal to sin omega t plus delta or y by b is equal to sin of a plus b that is sin omega t cos delta plus cos omega t sin delta we simply use the equation sin of a plus b that is equal to y by b is equal to i substitute for sin omega t as x by a from this equation so y by b is equal to x by a cos delta plus cos omega t i replace it as root of 1 minus x square by a square root of 1 plus x uh, 1 minus x square by a square into sin delta now what i do is i keep the root term on one side and i square the entire equation 
I keep only the root uh, term on one side. I want to eliminate the root. So what I do? I square. I rearrange and then square. On squaring, you get y by b minus x by a cos delta the whole square into this entire term the whole square. That is y square by b square minus 2xy by a b cos delta plus x square by a square cos square delta is equal to 1 minus x square by a square sin square delta. This x square by a square sin square delta minus x square by a square sin square delta I bring it to this side so that I get y square by b square plus with this term I club plus x square by a square sin square delta. That is, I get x square by a square cos square delta plus sin square delta minus 2xy by a b cos delta is equal to sin square delta. This cos square delta plus sin square delta is equal to 1 so that my final equation becomes x square by a square minus 2xy by a b cos delta plus y square by b square is equal to sin square delta. So, this is the general equation that I get for the resultant displacement in the medium because of, uh, uh, because of both these E and O components. That is, this is how E and O components in the Randalding Kudi vibration karanam orimicha immediately indagana displacement in the rubum in x square by a square minus 2xy by a b cos delta plus y square by b square equal to sin square delta. This is the resultant displace, resultant equation due to the vibrations of the x, uh, due to the vibrations of the O and E component that I get in the medium when these rays or when these vibrations emerge out of my crystal. Okay, now I am going to consider three different cases. First case, when delta is equal to 0. Delta equal to 0 means there is, suppose there is no phase difference between my O and E component. Suppose I allow uh, the O and E components to fall on the crystal and you just imagine there is no phase difference between, that is there is no path difference between the O and E components. Then what will happen to my equation? Cos when delta equal to 0, cos delta equal to 1, sin delta equal to 0. So, the equation becomes x square by a square minus 2xy by a b plus y square by b square equal to 0 or this is equal to x by a minus y by b the whole square equal to 0. That is a minus b equal to the whole square equal to 0 which implies x by a minus y by b is equal to 0 or y equal to b by a into x. This is the general equation for a straight line. That is, if the path difference between the O and E components or if the phase difference between the O and E components is equal to 0, then the em light emerging from or the vibrations emerging from the uh, doubly refracting crystal will have the equation of a straight line or the emergent beam equation of a straight line means the emergent beam is plane polarized or linearly polarized if the phase difference between the O and E components is zero. The vibrations have a displacement given like this in the form of a straight line means the emergent beam uh, I considered a beam of plane polarized light to be incident normally in a direction perpendicular to the optic axis with vibrations inclined at an angle theta on a doubly refracting crystal. Now, such a beam, if the, uh, uh, what to say, the phase difference between the O and E components is zero, then the emergent beam will be plane polarized. Next, I consider the condition where the phase difference is pi by 2 and A and B are not equal. That is the uh, phase difference between the O and E components is pi by 2 and the uh, amplitudes of the O and E components are not equal. That means x square, my equation, general equation reduces to x square by a square plus y by y square by b square equal to 1. That is, the this is the equation of an ellipse. That is, the emergent beam is elliptically polarized when the phase difference between the O and E components is pi by 2 and their amplitudes are not equal equal then the emergent beam is elliptically polarized and the last one uh, 
uh, when delta equal to pi by 2 and a equal to b. That means x square plus y square is equal to a square. This is the equation of a circle. So, the emergent beam is circularly polarized when the phase difference between the O and E components is pi by 2 and if their amplitudes are equal. So, mathematically, now we have derived how we can produce circularly and elliptically polarized light. So, to produce circularly polarized light, the phase difference between the O and E components must be pi by 2 and their amplitudes must be equal. To produce elliptically polarized light, the uh, phase difference between, their, um, between the O and E components must be equal to pi by 2 and their amplitudes must not be equal. So, this is the mathematical theory behind the production of circularly and elliptically polarized light. The actual production we will learn in our next session. So, I hope this explanation is clear to all of you. Thank you.